Uh, heart is very important, I think, <laughs> as everybody knows. Heart problems present very serious health issues in our society. Scientists use mathematical models to make new discoveries that will help them treat these potentially fatal health problems. You can hope to uh, help design devices to interact with the heart. So, for example, artificial heart valves. Uh, if someone has an idea how to, maybe how to make an artificial heart valve, we could try it out in the computer before actually trying it out in animals or people. But also, uh, an important part is just understanding how the natural system works. So there's also a pure motivation here, not a pure math motivation, but a pure science motivation to, to um, understand how the heart functions and, and why, why it is the way it is. So for example, one part of my work I would sort of call mathematical anatomy, and that is, um, can we explain the fiber structure of the heart and the fiber structure of the valves based on mathematical and physical principles. There's something very interesting and unexpected happens, which is there's a kind of fractal structure. So the collagen fibers that support the valve, they, they, they form a, a complicated um, sort of branching braided structure. And we had, when we started, no hope of that, that that would emerge from the equations, but actually it does. So when we solve the equations numerically, we see all that complexity coming out. Valves can either become stiffened and, and resist the flow too much, and so, so there's a, a big pressure drop. It's hard for the heart to pump the blood through the valve if it's an outflow valve, or, or if it's an inflow valve, then fluid sort of backs up in the lungs. For example, you get high pressures in the lungs, so that's called a stenotic valve. And the valve can also leak, and, and either of those things are, are ultimately bad for the heart. Um, and another kind of thing that can happen is heart failure. It's a, it's a very important medical problem um, and um, not very well understood. And, and of course there are treatments for it, but the treatments are not perfect and we'd like to understand better that. So for example, we've made a model of a, pa a patient specific model from, uh, from a scan of a failing heart and, to and we're using it to study heart failure. A another example is there are treatments for heart failure which are, which are called resynchronization therapy. So it's a little bit like a tune-up for a car, adjusting the timing. And so electrically, uh, cardiologists can adjust the timing of the heart. But what's the best way to do that? We can study it in the computer and simulate uh, what would happen if you changed the timing and, and what, the, what the mechanical consequence of that would be. So that's the importance of having an electrical and mechanical model, which is the, a, a recent part of my work is to make a, a combined model of that type.